I, 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 I understand. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Very good evening. work. Good evening uh, from uh, from Hanya, from Crete, from Portugal, from Porto, and uh, from all over the place. I can see participants from Africa, from Israel, from Europe, from Greece. So I would like to welcome you in one of these uh, sessions of the Athena Soft and Research Skills Development. It's one of the joint initiatives that we plan uh, along the European University Alliance that we participate. And I'm very glad that the today's speaker comes, is one of the core members of our alliance, is Professor Tatiana Welzer from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, Tatiana leads the work package for uh, the research, and I'm pretty sure that uh, through uh, during her experience collaborating with so many people, uh, especially also now as we are building our alliance, she has identified the importance of the cultural intelligence and how you should communicate with the Greeks, how to communicate with the Germans, the same information. And uh, what does it mean, for example, the time uh, definition and the, 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 and the deadline definition in South Europe or in North Europe? So I suspect that Tatiana will analyze more things than uh, what did I say? Tatiana, um, he, among her research uh, interests include data modeling, internationalization, and cultural issues uh, of IT. She is very active, a part of the core uh, topics of her science, which is computer science, very much the, the gender balance within the ICT. So we are here to listen, you know, one, uh, I believe fascinating talk and very important talk uh, about the cultural intelligence. So the floor is your Tatiana. And once again, thank you very much for your contribution. We know how busy you are, how many responsibilities you have. So we appreciate a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Costa. Thank you, Anna, for uh, the invitation. And it is uh, my pleasure to spend the rest of the afternoon or evening, depends where you are <clears throat> with you. For some, it's still early afternoon. The others, we are in the middle, while the rest are already in the evening. And we have immediately already the cultural issues uh, about the time, about the hour, and about uh, or which part of the day we are, and what is comfortable for some uh, groups of people that I'm not really saying nations, uh, it's maybe less comfortable for the others. But uh, let's uh, go slide by slide um, and um, try to present some facts, try to open some problems and try to show also some solutions and discuss the examples that Costas mentioned already uh, in his announcement of my talk. I will try to share my screen. I hope I will not get lost with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, slide by slide and uh, just if you have any question, please stop me, interrupt me, uh, so that we can discuss the, uh, immediately the details. But of course, also at the end, we will have the possibility um, to have a discussion. And I hope I will be able uh, to answer on uh, your questions. So I'm sharing the screen. Uh, and I hope you can see my slides. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, Tatiana, it's not in the full screen. We can see, you know, it's not in the full screen. So, if you it can is on full screen in my side. So, plus, so stop sharing and share it again because uh, as it is now, we are not going to be able to see the, the rotation. Okay. Of the I will do it once again. Just a moment.
In the middle time, I would like to announce you that from the 26th to the 30th of September, we organize in Hania in Crete, our international week in digital and soft skills for internationalization. So I will send an email and an announcement where you can participate as a speaker or as an attendant, an attendee. attendee. Uh, I got the information that you can see my slide. It was I cannot. Written. I cannot see. I can see your slide, but I cannot see it in the full screen. So you should make it in the full screen. So if you go uh, down uh, to the right, you will see the or press F five as uh, Elena is uh, typing. Is your your? I, we can see your leg, your transparencies, but not in the full screen. The transparencies, the transparencies themselves. Yeah, uh, on my side, it is... Uh, uh, Tatiana, sorry, are you using double screen? No. Two screens? No. Okay, so instead of sharing the PowerPoint, yep. Uh, yes, but Tatiana did that. Uh, share the whole screen. Because I believe that you are yeah, sharing, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, are sharing is, the yes. slides. Yes, yes. So when you yes. only that uh, that tab. So when you do that, if you magnify it, it doesn't matter because it will only show the 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 file that you are sharing and not the whole screen. You have to share the the screen itself, not only the the document. Okay, let's try once again. Yeah, yeah, so we will see your, your environment, your work environment. <laughs> yeah, that's a, 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 a trick that Zoom has. Yes, yes, that's it. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. <clears throat> you are the winner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so um, I hope now uh, that uh, um, I will be able uh, to go further with the presentation. It seems that I got some text here down. I hope that you are not uh, seeing my talk uh, because this is again something what happened unexpected to me and uh, I really don't want to have that, but whatever. Uh, we are here at Athena Soft and the Research Skill Academy and my goal is to bring you into the world of culture intelligence or the importance of the culture, uh, not only in, uh, as a soft skill, but also as a part of the research. Uh, let's have a, a look um, to the next slide. Uh, yeah, I'm again in the troubles, uh, so I don't want to... Um, to enable me to move to the next slide, okay. Let's, let's do it in that way. Uh, so um, first, I will speak about some introduction in the connection with cross-cultural communication uh, in the real life uh, problems and solutions. Um, then uh, general more about the culture definitions and culture awareness in the connection with um, stereotypes and uh, nonverbal communication, which is also very important, especially also in the meetings like this uh, uh, or now. Um, why? Uh, yeah, because uh, um, uh, when we are online and our cameras are on, um, then we are showing our face, uh, uh, we are doing some movement with the face, with the hand, and uh, we are sending also through these some informations on which may, might be we are not uh, um, taking so much care in other cases. Um, for the second part, uh, we will, if uh, the time will allow us, we will go a bit to the models in the culture um, I selected two most well-known and important from Hofstede and Luis, but also the culture matrix will be presented. 
And then we will show what means working in culture, different themes, what are few of the elements on which we have to take uh, 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 part or take care um, that we are not going uh, um, into discussion that could cause some misunderstandings. If we are looking here to these three men, we can see that they are speaking in different languages. Uh, I suppose the, the, the middle one is the Japanese. I have no idea for the third one, but I know that the first is also the Finnish one. Um, I'm not sure that we have somebody now with us uh, being able to read or understand uh, Spanish and myself, I'm uh, only um, able to say a few words in Finnish, but they are more or less uh, uh, the, the, the basic words that we are using for thank you, welcome, uh, and similar. And usually it is so with us. Um, we are speaking uh, our mother language. We are usually speaking also one of the um, lingua franca where the most uh, important one or the leading one is English, uh, but uh, then we can speak one or another more language. Um, those who are lucky, maybe they can go up to 10 or something like that. But in general, um, we are not able to understand all the languages all around the world. Even the Google and similar tools are not able to translate everything very well and correct, but uh, uh, just uh, limited. And of course, through the language, we can lost also some informations and we can appear in the difficulties uh, because of that. Um, besides the language, I mentioned already before that the nonverbal communication is very uh, uh, important. And one of the problems uh, with which uh, we can uh, be faced in different situations are, of course, the behavioral patterns how to say hello, what to do, um, should we shake the hands, should we put the kisses on the cheeks, uh, um, how to accept the business card or how to give the business card to other people. So these are a few situations in which we can appear. And uh, to be honest, these are the situations that we were used before the COVID-19. Uh, and uh, through the uh, uh, pandemic uh, period, uh, also our cultures, our habits, uh, our behavior patterns changed a lot. Um, we need uh, to wash the hands, we need to carry the masks, um, we stop to shake hands, we stop to put the kisses on the cheeks, and uh, probably we stopped also to share uh, business cards because we were not traveling. Everything was actually online. Um, does this mean that those uh, uh, behavioral patterns uh, disappeared and they will not appear anymore? Of course not, uh, because when we are coming again uh, uh, to, meet, to meet each other, um, we are slowly coming again to shake the hands. This is the most often, uh, but uh, we can also recognize that people are still a bit reserved and uh, we are staying mostly with just um, saying hello. Um, this problem shows us immediately that some of the problems could be uh, permanent while the others could change through the time because there something, something has happened and changed our culture, our habits. And uh, this is not only by the behavioral patterns, but we would be able to see also by some others. 
Um, also, um, we are not all coming from the same fields. Um, in Athena, we are coming from seven different institutions and many, many fields. And I hope that today we are not only together the people from uh, computer science and informatics, uh, but also from uh, uh, some other fields, either technical or less technical. And that immediately means that we have another way of thinking and building up the concepts and sentences. Um, especially by presenting, so building also sentences. Uh, it's uh, important um, how good we are in the language that we are using. And uh, uh, this could cause also the problems that we will not understand very well each others and that we could uh, run into the troubles in one or another way. Um, as uh, long as I'm coming from uh, uh, engineering, um, originally I'm electrical engineer, uh, working on databases, security, uh, cross-culture communication, and uh, some uh, other fields that Costas mentioned before. Uh, uh, in any case, I'm engineer. And uh, engineers, we have often to listen that we are uh, too much uh, uh, algorithmic in our thinking, in uh, uh, expression, our thoughts, or building up uh, our concepts. And this could be also a problem, a culture issue, but the culture issue from uh, the job uh, uh, point of view. So uh, what uh, the job we are doing in that language, we are expressing uh, our concepts and sentences. And uh, this uh, uh, can be a problem as well. So uh, culture is spread uh, all around the fields. Um, and uh, of course, the business, um, the, the uh, organization, um, so how the organization is organized, yeah, two similar words, um, it's also can be a culture issue. Um, what are the, the, the schedules of working? Uh, what kind of dress code is expected? Um, how the hierarchy is organized? So uh, yeah, mm, also this point of view we have to follow. Uh, what is happening in all those cases? I mentioned a few times misunderstandings, of course. Uh, misunderstanding because of the language, misunderstanding because of the um, behavioral patterns, misunderstanding because of way of thinking and concepts that we are doing, uh, misunderstanding because of different uh, uh, organizational structures, um, misunderstandings uh, um, because of the business culture, uh, and so on. Um, so um, as long as uh, we are not building the flying bus instead of the bus, uh, uh, instead of the bicycle is okay. But as long as uh, the requirements are expecting to build up um, the bicycle uh, and we are building up a kind of the flying bus, then of course we are uh, um, in the situation that the gap uh, of understanding our cultures is big and that we have to do something to avoid the problems like this. Um, I mentioned already before that um, I'm an engineer, that I'm coming from ICT. And of course, uh, we want to be practical. We want to have the solutions, either the algorithms, either the diagrams, either the procedures. 
uh, which should help us and which should not uh, cause um, the problems uh, um, during uh, the um, presentation of our ideas. Models are more or less perfect. They are easy to be learned. Um, they are usually also supported by the tools, but they are still not covering the ideas like that, um, that my full name and family name is Tatiana Wilcev Druzovets, and that maybe uh, the full name and family name of some other person is Jose Luis Sanchez de la Rosa. Uh, if I'm looking to these two informations um, from the data point of view, uh, Tatiana Vilce Druzovets and Jose Luis Sanchez de la Rosa, it's the question what I'm presenting. Uh, in my case, I'm presenting my given name, Tatiana. I'm presenting my maid name, Wilzer, and I'm presenting my uh, name, uh, uh, married family name, so Drozovets. But in the case of Jose Luis Sanchez de la Rosa, I have the combination of two names, Jose Luis. Okay, this is still somehow equal to Tatiana. Uh, Sanchez seems to be a family name, and De La Rosa seems to be also a family name. But it's Sanchez really uh, uh, the person's uh, main name. It is the man, and De La Rosa, or what, married from the wife, from whoever. So uh, quite often the models are not enough to understand correctly the culture-based data and information. Uh, because in my case, it's given name and it's mid name and uh, the family name that I got it from my husband. In the second case is the given name, the mother's, uh, the father's name and the mother's name. And if we are doing then some analysis, uh, or whatever um, other decision making on that, we can make completely wrong decision by, by such a basic information as its given name and the family name. And no, no model will solve that. Entity relationship model for those who are coming from databases, it's a great tool. You can do a lot of the things, but it's not showing you the culture differences and issues, and you have to do this by yourself or one or another way. Uh, about those technical solutions, I will let you know more at the end of my presentation. Um, we like to say that the pictures are saying more uh, as the words. So here we have icons as a good solutions to, to solve the problem uh, in the communication, in uh, concepts, in understanding. But I'm not sure um, that I'm able to understand those icons. Some of them are not understandable or I would not be able to react correctly. I have to stop. I, I'm not allowed to go left, not to the right, not back, and not forward. So I can stop in this crossing for all my life. So these are known icons, but are still uh, uh, causing the problems. Um, cows following down on the street on the car. Why cows? Why the crocodile? So to be honest, at least two of uh, those icons are not understandable to me. Um, neither the one with the toilet, uh, if uh, the others are more or less reasonable. So some we collected also for fun uh, to see that also the icons are not the final solution. Um, why not? Because 
if we are coming from different culture uh, surroundings, we might be do not understand some of those icons. Um, here we have the icons that for the ICT people should be all well known. But what about the older generation, um, our parents, for example, um, the people that are not coming from IT, not using the mobile phones or just using them for phoning, not to be on social media and so on. Um, yeah, again, um, there is something uh, uh, up to date. Um, there should be spread all around the world, but we will still have people that will not understanding this. So icons are good solutions, models are good solutions, but we still have open questions. Um, so let's try to find out what is um, the culture. Um, the culture is many things. Um, the culture are values, the culture are knowledge and stories, the culture are languages, the culture are behaviors, the cultures are traditions and rituals, uh, tools and objects, uh, the art, food and drink, uh, diversity, equality, gender, community, thoughts, uh, ethnicity, um, traditions nations uh, and i believe we could find even more uh, so culture language ethnics nation nationality ethnics folklore this we didn't mention historical wisdom race vision so um, culture is uh, many things and a lot of things um, and um, try to think try. by yourself what the culture is meaning to you. So might be somebody could share with me what is the culture for you. Um, it's a familiar word, has a complex history and a diverse range of meanings. But what is first coming to your mind if somebody is saying culture? I will say behavioral patterns, habits, um, definitions, let's say, of, of habits and behaviors like respect of time deadlines, or who doesn't mean a time deadline. Um, how, do, how do we perceive the hierarchy? In some cultures, for example, the hierarchy does not, you know, I mean, if you go, if you compare, for example, you know, the South Europeans, we don't believe so much in the hierarchy. We are more free to act than to follow the hierarchy. Uh, yeah. Other things is like how to act. For example, uh, in my culture, I believe we like to act very fast in any triggering. And then if we are doing mistakes, we replan and go from the other way. Other cultures, they like to think much more than to act immediately. Uh, these kind of things. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kostas. Uh, uh, you numbered many, many of those things that I will mention in the next slides as well. Um, because uh, um, in different literature, uh, you can find different definitions which are more limited, like those one going on behavioral norms, linguistic expressions, styles of communication, how we are communicating. The medical doctors are communicating differently as engineers I mentioned already before. Patterns of thinking and beliefs, what we pointed out uh, uh, already. Uh, Hofstede defined uh, the culture as the software of the mind. So we are the software, uh, hardware, and the software of our mind is the culture which is built up from these small puzzles that we are putting together. It is a collective phenomenon shared with people who live or lived within the same social environment. So this is something what we are sharing with uh, other people. Um, 
and uh, it is a kind of collective programming of uh, the mind in which we distinguish the members of one human group from another human group. Um, so either these groups are divided by genders, by food, by music, by language, uh, by art, uh, whatever it's the answer, what is culture? Uh, for me, most often the culture is uh, still my first thinking. It's going to the art, to the theater, to the opera, uh, to the music, to the film. But it is much more and it is much more tightly connected to us people. Um, I mentioned uh, in the content that I will uh, present uh, also some cultural models. And one of those uh, um, is uh, the Lewis model. And uh, the Lewis defined culture, culture behavior uh, as end product of centuries of collected wisdom filtered and passed through hundreds of generations and presented by numerous beliefs and other patterns. And there inside this definition is what I mentioned uh, at the beginning, that our culture changed quite a lot during the last two and a half years, almost three years, uh, because of pandemic, because of uh, uh, living digital instead face of face to face. So all those things uh, influenced, of course, our life, uh, um, our thinking, our beliefs, uh, and other patterns. Um, in um, in uh, trying to include everything, what are those small uh, puzzles uh, uh, of the culture, it's very hard to number everything. Um, in um, these definitions from Liu, Volcic and Galois, uh, the ladies from uh, Australia, who are from different national cultures, Liu is from China, Volcic is from Slovenia, and Galois is from France. Um, they numbered uh, um, that uh, um, culture is a particular way of life for a group of people comprising the deposit of knowledge, experience, beliefs, values, traditions, religion, uh, notion of time we didn't mention yet, so directly roles, uh, worldviews, material objects, and at last but not least, also geographical territory. Because the geographical territory can also influence our culture. Um, if you are from south of Europe, as Costas mentioned already a few times, um, uh, uh, our culture of food and drinks will be different as somebody is coming from the north of the Europe. Uh, and uh, uh, at last but not least, only this really geographical territory. Um, also, the, um, the weather can influence our culture. Um, nowadays, um, in Slovenia, uh, we have uh, a summer, so to say. Um, we got last week temperatures of 30 degrees. And that means uh, that instead of uh, uh, having four uh, um, uh, seasons of the year, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, we are more and more going into something having spring and summer and autumn and winter. And our winters, instead of being white, are more and more green. And who knows, might be in 100 years in this area, this geographical territory, the people will not skiing anymore. And skiing will be just uh, a culture uh, remembering uh, uh, on the time 
when we were living in the part of the world with the snow and uh, this was one of our uh, traditions. Um, so uh, influence, it's coming from different uh, fields and uh, uh, we have to take uh, this into account and be aware how the things are changing and how they are influencing our daily life, our daily activities. Um, I prepared even more definitions, but uh, yeah, uh, you can have more detailed look to them. Uh, the last one that I would like to point it out are um, national culture uh, and culture in the society as one level, then we can go down to the region and local culture, but be aware that region is not something what is catched inside the national border. It can go over the borders and the regions can be divided by different uh, uh, countries, for example. Uh, University of Maribor means the city of Maribor is a, it's a capital of region called Styria. And Styria is a region that it's known for Slovenia, but it's also known for Austria. In, and the capital of Austrian Styria, it's Graz, the second largest Austrian city. So the region is going over the national border and has some common values that are not typical for the whole nation, either the Slovenian one, either the Austrian one. For example, pump, pumpkin oil. Um, do you know for do you know the pumpkin oil or did you taste it the pumpkin oil those that you are coming to visit us in slovenia uh, you probably tasted it already it's uh, far away from olive oil of course it's made of pumpkins pumpkin seeds and it's a uh, um, strong green brown color and has also a strong taste. So the pumpkin oil, it's not known all around Slovenia. Okay, you can get it in supermarkets and so on and so far, but it's not typical all around the Slovenia, uh, as well as even less uh, around the Austria, but it, it's typical for Styria. So, the region has something what it's common to the region, but not necessarily to the nation and to the national culture. I mentioned already before also the business culture, which can be divided into professional and functional culture, depends on the profession and depends on functionalities that we are following. And in the connection with the business culture, we have to mention also organizational and corporate culture. Um, big companies, global companies has their own corporate culture and they expect that this corporate culture is followed in all uh, national surroundings. But it's hard uh, because some of the things are, as we said before, geographically, as well as also, I don't know, uh, um, by weather uh, uh, influenced. And you cannot say that the lunch is at noon. If we know that might be in Finland, they want to go for the lunch at 11 o'clock in Slovenia between noon and one. And in uh, Spain, and Portugal probably around two o'clock. Uh, even worse, it is with the dinner. So you can also, if you are building the organizational and corporate culture, you might be, are not able to fix everything by the corporation because there is the influence of the national culture. And uh, might be some time is not good to have the lunch because it's too warm 
and it's better to have it a bit later or whatever. Uh, so in inside organizational and corporate culture, it is important to mention also the social groups, the people socialize, and they are building the groups either uh, on uh, the profession basic, either on factional basis, either just of the interest, I don't know, uh, basketball players or uh, um, father uh, uh, lovers. Uh, and uh, of course, they are showing then through this part of the culture, their interest and of course, the culture is itself. Um, also in the profession, we can find the subgroups uh, as well. Uh, as long as profession is then divided in small parts. If we are saying engineers, this is not the same. And if we are talking about the ICT engineers, electrical engineers, or chemical engineers, because we are again faced with different things. Um, yes, I promise that this was the last definition and that we are moving further. Uh, but we are still by the, the question, what is the culture? And in the connection with that, uh, we are quite often faced with culture shock, with culture awareness, um, because uh, we can come in some uh, surrounding and we are not used on the habits that we are faced there. It can be also in the working place um, because if we are coming as an engineer in the company um, which is dealing with, I don't know, um, support, uh, uh, mental support uh, to children, um, of course, um, there will be the way of discussing, talking, uh, making activities uh, in some way different as we are used. Uh, would be this a culture shock for us? Probably not, or for somebody even, because it could be so different. Culture shock, of course, leads to feelings of disorientation and anxiety, and uh, um, can make us confused, stressed, feeling not well. Um, everything what uh, uh, we would uh, understand under the medical uh, uh, word uh, shock. Um, understanding the culture shock, it's very important because if we understand that something what's happening is the result of the culture shock, it means that we recognize different cultures and that we understand different cultures. Uh, what is then the reverse culture shock? Um, reverse culture shock probably happened to us when we return from some um, longer staying in some other cultures, some mobility, um, Sometimes it's even enough uh, um, a conference visit or some holidays. And when we are out of our um, primary culture, um, we learn then the new culture. Maybe we find something what it's very interesting for us. And then uh, we are confused. And when we are coming back, uh, we are might be surprised uh, how was this? Uh, it's really like that. Um, okay, on the short period, it's this hard uh, to recognize, but three to four months that our students are doing during the mobility, it's already enough. They, they, uh, they are missing at the beginning, I don't know, the mama's food, um, the, the, the friends, uh, um, the way how uh, spending the free time, but after a while they learned new friends, new habits, new food, and when they are coming back home, uh, they are surprised. The surprise that 
that the, the things are different as they were living in the last period. Uh, to be honest, my first experience, it was not my own, but it was with um, the students during the time that I was Erasmus coordinator. And um, I have to deal with a girl going to Finland be unhappy because she was in cold, in darkness, uh, uh, and um, the people were, I mean, friendly, uh, but she had the problem to find friends at the beginning. But after almost the whole year, when she returned back, or only one semester, she was then shocked at home in some way because their friends were different. Did friends really change during the time? Might be, probably, but she changed. She was more open-minded. She learned new point of view uh, on different things. And from that reason, uh, she was in this reverse shock. Actually, she was building through this also the culture awareness. So the ability of observing culture from outside. Um, culture awareness is based on knowledge of the foreigner culture and own culture. Uh, when uh, I said already before, when we are in the shock means that we recognize the differences means that we are building up the knowledge of different cultures. And these are, this is already meaning the awareness, uh, meaning that we are aware about the differences and we are prepared to listen to the differences, to observe the differences. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, take them into daily life. Um, we became uh, uh, culture averse um, when uh, we also recognize that we are not all the same, even if we are engineers, um, that uh, uh, we are uh, not reacting the same, even if we are coming from the same gender. Um, so. Uh, we have to realize these differences, as I mentioned uh, already uh, before. People from different cultures can interpret, evaluate, and see things on, uh, in different ways. So still the same things are seen differently. Like I, I showed you the example with... Uh, 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 given name and the family name that it's combination of more family names and you have to find out what is that meaning. How we learned about the culture. We said, okay, it is important that we are aware through the shock we learn already, uh, with observation we learned already, but Sometimes we do not have enough time or we do not have enough knowledge or we are just getting the knowledge through the cultural stereotypes. So the stereotypes are um, giving the information about the country, about the culture, about the profession, about the people. Uh, but uh, uh, they can be completely correct or they are just partially correct. Um, here I have uh, two nationalities presenting, uh, the American one and the French one. And my French students on Erasmus, they always complain about the Frenchmen. Um, they agree with the baguette. They agree with the red wine, but the rest, it's uh, too much for them. First of all, like, okay, we are not heavy smokers. Um, we are not have the, the, the stripes uh, t-shirt and we do not have the Basque cap. But yeah, uh, uh, maybe 
if we would look through the centuries or through the years, we could find some similarities still. And the Americans could complain that they are not eating just the hamburgers, but that they are eating also French fries. So no big difference from that point of view as a stereotype, as a fast food. Uh, but um, yeah, could be the, the complaint in that way. So what are actually stereotypes? They are beliefs um, about characteristic of certain groups uh, based on physical attributes or so uh, social sta status. Um, they could be uh, a generalization uh, of the members of the group or the country, but they should not be that, but it is coming like that. Um, they form uh, um, social consensus rather than individual judgments, uh, but sometimes it's also individual judgments and they can be based on prejudice that could go completely wrong. But on the other side, the stereotypes are helping us to learn faster some of the things. I collected here some uh, um, stereotypes uh, and these are from the uh, internet. So uh, with the digitalization, with the internet, with the word uh, wide web, um, the numbers of stereotypes start to grow because they were shared faster. And uh, from that point of view, also more uh, maybe wrong stereotypes appear. Also negative stereotypes appear uh, like uh, Irish people are drunks and eat potatoes. Okay, eating potatoes. Can I, yes. Can I ask something on this? Yes, of course, uh, you're welcome. How much, you know, these stereotypes have been affected by the globalization? Because now a lot of our immigration, uh, I mean, you know, we, there are societies within the big countries, let's say, during the 1950s and 1960s, that a lot of people from the South Europe or from Asia, they have been, they have been uh, immigrated and somehow they have mixed with the local people and the local societies. So the outcome uh, regarding the stereotype changing, is changing. I mean, how much this has been affected? Is this taking into the consideration? Because I think that probably this is one of the mistakes and the main error of the stereotypes right now. Yep. For sure, this is uh, uh, one of the mistakes and errors, as you said, uh, because the people are coming to new surroundings, they start to mix, and uh, they, they, they may be forgetting some of the things and the other people who met those people, they are building up new stereotypes that are not uh, uh, in correlation with what the people uh, um, knew already before about that. Uh, and uh, globalization. So as I said, digitalization, everything is easy available um including the fake news and then we can get also the fake stereotypes and uh, as you know uh, if there is the fake or if there is a stereotype even the both are not correct one if you repeat often enough it be it became uh, a reality and uh, then we we have additional problems in the way of uh, um, culture shock, in the way of understanding others and uh, uh, not to stereotype uh, uh, people or uh, even more to make the prejudice uh, which can uh, uh, end it in genocide uh, or the reactions uh, uh, like that. Um, Actually, uh, uh, I have a personal uh, uh, experience from my childhood. Uh, in the age of six or seven years, um, uh, a, a boy of the same age or even younger as myself, he said to me, are you gypsy? 
uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, why? Uh, my skin, it's uh, not the, I mean, uh, it's a bit more brownish. I had uh, during that time even more dark hair. <clears throat> and uh, I have no idea how he was coming to that. And might be I was also dressed in the way that he made some conclusion that maybe parents expa explain to him something. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and I was stereotyped for a while as a gypsy. So, <coughs> sorry, we have to be very, very careful what we are doing with the stereotypes and be aware, <coughs> sorry, that the world is changing very much and that new and new stereotypes are coming and uh, each stereotype is good to be checked if this is true or not true. And when we are dealing with the stereotypes, we should try to deal with the positive one. Like, I don't know, um, there in this slide, uh, Finland is presented by Nokia, positive. If there will be the bottle of vodka, it could be negative. <coughs> so try to be positive. Stereotypes are not something new. They start with the stereotypes already in 18th century or even more earlier. As soon as the people start to travel, they try to present others what they saw or how they understand some country, some people. And uh, so we got a lot of stereotypes of presentation of the people, especially from the continent, they, that they were far away from Europe. Um, so um, what, can, what all is actually influencing stereotypes? Uh, Costas present some of examples I was speaking in generally about the um, stereotypes. Um, is this always just the verbal communication or can be also some nonverbal communication? Also, the nonverbal communication uh, can influence um, stereotypes, can influence our way of communication and as I mentioned already at the beginning, now when we are used to work and do a lot of things online, the nonverbal communication in the connection with the culture is even more important. Um, I'm sure that for many years, um, even that this was well known in the Arabic world, uh, throwing the shoes uh, was not was meaning the same. Um, so uh, be negative to what somebody said and they, they use this or whatever. But when this happened to George Bush, uh, then it became worldwide uh, well known. We know that the things are going viral today uh, quite often either with words, either with non-verbal part. And this non-verbal part, it's, believe or not, 93% of meaning uh, that we want to, to give further. So um, most of our uh, uh, communication, it's at the end of the day, non-verbal and not verbal, independent, how talkative we are. Uh, because besides the talking, we are doing many other things. And these are uh, 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 
these nonverbal uh, um, words uh, that influence also the culture or are based on the culture. And we have to be even more careful because by the words, uh, as Costas mentioned before, that uh, the, the south of Europe start to do activities immediately if this is not okay start from the other side you can apologize you can explain by by the nonverbal code by the body movement or, or hand movements whatever if you are showing already something it's maybe even more recognized and for that uh, reason it is very important that we we present it correctly um, types of nonverbal code are many. Uh, we will not go through them because, uh, uh, yeah, no, then I need to have uh, uh, two uh, uh, two blocks uh, of uh, presentation, not just one. Uh, so body movement or kinesics, uh, vocal vocal qualities or paralanguage. We pointed out. Uh, uh, um, it's clear uh, when the parents are angry on children and children notice even if they are small when they do something wrong because they recognize this in the voice uh, of parents. Uh, use of time is also nonverbal communication in some way. Uh, because if we are, um, how to say, uh, uh, not respect the time, or we are late, or we are too early, whatever, we are sending some messages through this as well. Uh, one of very, very important, and became in, very much important in the last two and a half years, is use of space, proxemics. Already before it was non-written rule that as long as are our hands, uh, this should be the private space in which other people should not enter. Now, or during the pandemic, they suggested us to have the distance of at least two meters and so on. And the people still I believe prefer uh, um, this distance in one or another way. Use of touch. Mm -hmm. This is also something what it's not really popular just now. Um, then uh, uh, physical appearance, artifacts, dress, uh, also smell, uh, it's nonverbal communication and uh, we are not very used on it. Uh, I mean, in the way that we would communicate something special through this, but some cultures are uh, with the smell sending the messages to other persons. Um, for us, it's usually this smell in the way doing the sport, and then we do not smell neither well for us. Uh, so we want to have very fast the shower while in some culture, this would mean something even positive. Uh, what we are all doing with the nonverbal code, we repeat the verbal message, we contradict the verbal message, or we substitute uh, a verbal message with it. But usually, we would like additional to point out the verbal uh, uh, message give the accent to the verbal message, uh, or we would like to regulate the verbal message. It is good that we are just on uh, online and that uh, my, uh, um, my computer is a small one. Uh, otherwise you would catch the cold already because the whole time I'm using my hands but probably you don't see them very often, only if I'm going to really uh, to the top and try to point out something with the hands uh, uh, or uh, something in this way. Uh, but <clears throat> it is important that we are aware 
also about this non-verbal part because the verbal it's closer to us, but non-verbal uh, we can even not uh, control sometimes. Uh, um, we are um, saying yes, but maybe we are not uh, uh, make the same uh, uh, gestures with the hands or with the head or whatever. And uh, um, also the gestures on the face, we cannot control completely. Um, the other day, somebody said to me why I'm sad. And I was a bit surprised. Um, and I was actually, I said, no, I'm not sad. Uh, I'm tired. But to be honest, when I start to analyze, I was tired, but actually I was also a bit sad. And uh, um, this was the message that I gave further, but was not completely aware about that. Before we are going to the end, this doesn't mean that we will end in uh, uh, two slides, just a bit more. Uh, Costas, how much time do I still have? You still have uh, more than uh, 40 minutes maximum, maximum. Oh. Okay. I do not have so many slides. Okay, <laughs> don't worry, but this is a maximum. You have already uh, oh, uh, exceed the minimum. So congratulations, Elena, for the new member of your family. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, so let's, let's do the walk a bit through the models. Um, the formal models uh, that uh, uh, I will point it out a little bit more are Hofstede model and Lewis model. The culture matrix, I like it uh, because we build it up together with a friend of mine uh, to, to, to present with the picture uh, all the differences. But iceberg model is something what is very easily and uh, uh, presents uh, us uh, what means um, actually the culture. Uh, uh, in by the iceberg, most of the part of the iceberg we could not see because it is under the water, and the part which is under the water is a danger part. We can crash in it. We can uh, uh, get in trouble. So the Titanic went down because of the iceberg. But we can have the Titanic crash in culture if we crash with the part that it's not visible to us. Um, the difference is that we cannot recognize are those that are the most dangerous. Uh, some people like very much the onion model uh, because we mentioned already that culture consists of many layers. Uh, and uh, as more as layers we take off, we are going deep into the center of the culture. And this recognition is growing and growing. Um, yeah, they are also presented here uh, uh, with the pictures. And this is that culture matrix where I would like to point out these re regional groups that I mentioned that are not necessarily fixed inside national borders. And if they are going out, they can have more common in the region as in the nation. Um, this was the story of my pumpkin oil. I mean, not my, but pumpkin oil in general. And here we put it into the middle of the, uh, of everything, the individual. And we can see here what kind of culture and what kind of knowledge or are influencing us. We didn't mention yet, uh, yet the age group. 
Uh, so uh, the year in which we are born uh, and the generation with which we are going through our life, uh, especially primary school, secondary school, um, also still um, the study years where the generation start to mix a bit more. But anyway, um, we can mention from the history, the students, in the year 1968, where um, the protests were all around the Europe uh, uh, and the students were the most active in those. So we can see that some generations are very influenced and very important for all cultures or for all the world. Don't forget that you have your own family culture and when you are going out of your family you are building a new family culture which is influenced by the, the family cultures of each partner or the partners build up, built up the, the new family culture uh, uh, it was just interesting today uh, I had the lectures in the morning for Erasmus students uh, from this uh, same topic, and we discussed the models. And then uh, uh, the student from Spain, she said that their family has a, a, a special habit, uh, culture, whatever you want to say, that they are according to the Spanish late lunch and dinner, even more late as the as this is in general or usual and that their colleagues learned already that she will have lunch much later as the others so they learn how to organize things so that she can participate but she uh, uh, this um, family habit of, of, or culture is not, uh, um, I would say, not damaged uh, because it's you cannot damage it, but that she's not getting into the troubles uh, uh, from this point uh, of view. Uh, of course, education and socio professional groups are influencing us. Uh, as well as uh, uh, if we belong to the smaller ethnical groups, as well as, uh, of course, the religion. Um, in Athena, I believe the, that we learned already through this one year and a half uh, very well uh, the culture differences in the connection with different holidays. Uh, <clears throat> Some of those holidays are based on the differences of the calendar or the religion. The others are based on the differences on nations. And when you put all this together in some moments like Christmas and the time around the Christmas and over the New Year and the time around uh, the Easter, uh, could be quite difficult to organize the meetings because if one group is not celebrating, the other group is celebrating. If everything is close uh, to some other national holidays, then the third group is celebrating. So we can see also through this how important it is that we are aware about that. Uh, because uh, uh, if we want to organize the meetings and activities um, in good uh, uh, um, timing and schedule, it is important that we are aware about that. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, if we are speaking about the universities, I can add then also the study calendars, um, some universities start first in October, the others start already in September, or maybe if we are in the States already at the end of uh, uh, August. Uh, then, of course, uh, even the week, the seven days are not the same in all, 
all cultures, I mean in the meaning. Uh, um, for most of us, Saturday and Sundays are the free days. In some cultures, the Sunday is the working day and the Friday is the day off. Uh, so all these can influence our life, our work, our understanding, thinking and reactions. But we are still by the models. And I just want to point out Gerd Hofstede, a Dutch social psychologist who studied national and organizational cultures. And he's the well known that she did it, the survey inside the IBM and built the unique database about the, the habits and reactions in 40 different countries. First of all, IBM was already during that time in the 70s, the global company, and they employed, of course, the people that they were coming from different cultures, even that the mobility was different as mobility today. Today we are mobile because um, we are going for, for conferences, we are going to Erasmus exchange, we are going to the holidays, uh, uh, we are going because of economics migration, uh, but uh, in 50s, 60s, especially also beginning of 70s, uh, the people were economics migrants and uh, uh, some of them just because they, 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 they want to, uh, uh, to check their possibilities with working in another surroundings and so on. Um, and he was trying to find out uh, what are the differences between the nations, between their values. And so on the base of the analytics, he built up four categories uh, to which uh, he was trying to measure the differences between the countries, power distance, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty avoidance. And later on, the experiment was uh, repeated, but more in Asia and Australia uh, area. And <clears throat> two new dimensions were defined, long-term orientation and indulgence or uh, restraint. And if we would have a time to have a detailed look what each one of these dimensions means, we would immediately recognize that the long-term orientation for sure was also connected to Asia and its area. The short definitions of the dimensions are presented here. Uh, you can also, uh, um, compare the countries by these, uh, 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 by these categories with the help of the free available tool on the internet. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it is in the slides just now, but uh, yeah, it is. I, I hope that uh, the, the link is correct one. I will check it uh, afterwards. Um, and uh, yeah, you can compare maximum four countries and you can get then also the description, what are the differences, what the difference is meaning. And uh, this is uh, easy reachable tool that could help us in the case that we are traveling or that we want to introduce the culture differences also to our students when the students from abroad are coming like Erasmus or uh, whatever it's uh, um, covering this difference either from partner institutions uh, and um, this is helping them uh, to learn a little bit about uh, uh, everything. Um, here I have the comparison, Anna, special for you uh, between Slovenia and Portugal. Sorry, Costas. 
I will add also the comparison between uh, Slovenia, Portugal, and Greece, and to see where where we are. But I just had it uh, this first one uh, for Slovenia and Portugal, and um, can, uh, in G Greece is uncomparable with anything. So you will not find anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for you. <laughs> Yes, Greece is basic of everything. So um, it's uh, it's uh, uh, then uh, 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 the start uh, uh, of everything and the start uh, and the end of everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 we can have then additional look from some other point of view. Uh, but uh, uh, here by Slovenia and Portugal, we can see quite some common uh, levels uh, of uh, those uh, categories. They are measured between zero and 100, like a percentage. And uh, according to my experience with the Portugal, I can agree with that. Um, so, Anna, I hope you can share the opinion that we are not so different, that we can easily communicate with each other, that we have uh, some uh, uh, common values, but still, uh, of course, some differences. Um, from my personal point of view, more than the Hofstede model, uh, I like the Richard Lewis model. Um, the both are the result of surveys. And by the surveys, you know that maybe, and so there is the personal opinion included and um, the decisions can be then maybe a bit wrong in one or another point. But why I like it, a bit more might be also because there are just three categories. They are not the categories for the measurements, but Richard Lewis divided everything what you can describe with culture in some way into linear active, multi-active, and reactive. Uh, while Hofstede model is going more on culture and nation, you can use a Richard Lewis model also to evaluate yourself, uh, to find out either you are linear active or you are multi-active or reactive. If your country is recognized as multi-active, this doesn't mean that everyone uh, living in Spain is multi-active. They are also linear active people and reactive people or somewhere in between and this model is enabling us uh, to, ma to measure that. Um, uh, how um, I'm going to this picture, uh, to this slide, where we said we have three corners of the triangle, linear active, reactive, and multi-active. Uh, he added also the colors, linear active, cold, uh, uh, decision, decision makers, uh, punctual uh, planners, uh, um, and connect to something what it's called, so blue color. Reactive, if we are looking, we are going from India over Indonesia, Korea, China, Japan, Vietnam, uh, Taiwan to um, Singapore and Hong Kong. So it is the corner of Asia where uh, we connect it to the, to the yellow color, while red is multi-active, uh, always in, in moving, uh, emotional, impulsive, um, and uh, yeah, everything was going up to that. Uh, oh, you will see just a few minutes later, uh, that uh, the categories are many more as just written there. Uh, but yes, you can have a look um, where is your country and think if you agree with that or you disagree with that. But if you are trying to find yourself, 
uh, you can find yourself also on the lines between linear active to reactive or reactive to multi-active or linear to multi-active like countries or in the middle of the map. I mean, in the middle of triangle because you are not really on the line. You are a little bit more inside because you are going to reactive and you are going a little bit also to multi-active. Just today, I gave my students uh, uh, the exercise. And this exercise you can do for yourself, each of you, maybe also for your colleagues, relatives, or whoever. What is your, um, how to say, category? Linear active, multi active, or reactive? How you can do that? Uh, sorry. Uh, we have here two tables with the parameters, and you can see um, that linear active are introvert, multi active are extrovert, and reactive are introvert. If somebody is extrovert or introvert, we do not have yet the decision or the definition of what we are and how we are. But further on, you can check all those uh, uh, parameters. And then you can make a decision who you are. Are you clear, linear, multi, reactive, or you are somewhere uh, in between? Um, on the same way, you can even uh, evaluate uh, some jobs or businesses. Uh, so the engineers uh, um, are probably not so much talkative, and, uh, are more, um, I don't know, job-oriented, sticks with to facts. And you can also evaluate then the jobs. Um, even uh, Richard Lewis did this and present uh, uh, something of that uh, uh, also in, uh, uh, in his books. Um, <clears throat> before by uh, Hofstede, I mentioned the tool. I just mentioned the, the free available tool. Uh, but they have more complex tools which are uh, available uh, uh, to be bought, so for, uh, for paying. And similar is with Richard Lewis. They have also a tool that can do some evaluation on the base of the data that we insert and on the base of the data that were already inserted before into the system. So <clears throat> if we are slowly, as we said, going to the end, uh, we are working today, oh, sorry, mm, I was going too fast, um, in the uh, culture different teams or our team today is culture different. Only if I'm saying, uh, uh, um, to, to four of us that I can see our names or our uh, uh, photos here, uh, Costas, Anna, and Elena, we are coming from different cultures. So if we are here presented, we are presenting uh, a, a team that it's together in this uh, soft and research skills academy participating but we are bringing our understanding of the culture, our understanding uh, of, uh, of thinking, uh, um, our comments. Uh, um, so we are different. And if we have daily to work together, it is good that we are aware of some of the differences, especially if we would like to have a successful uh, communication, so we have also to use some communication patterns. And the first one is lingua franca. Uh, I was discussing this already. Uh, the first lingua franca was probably the Greek language, 
because it was uh, spread then uh, around the Mediterranean Sea uh, as uh, the Greeks, uh, ancient Greeks uh, move uh, around. And we could discuss some other lingua franca like uh, Spanish because the most of South America except Brasilia and Middle America are also speaking uh, Spanish. Then in some period, the Latin was lingua franca and it was lingua franca in the uh, Rima Catholic Church still until the 70s um, because the, the, the communication in the service was still in the Latin. So, and it was used all around the world, independent on the country. Uh, then the communication patterns, um, they can be different uh, uh, from how we are saying hello, thank you, goodbye, up to how we are communicating in general. Richard Lewis did it a lot of research about that. And I put it on the next slide, just a few examples so that you can have a look how such communication can look like and it is similar also for the listening. Uh, when we are working in the team, also the concept of the space is important. So we have to be aware if somebody wants to have a lot of space around him or herself for whatever reason, the concept of time, uh, so if we start with the, with the skills and research of the academy, the lecture at 16, we are now more or less aware that we are starting this quarter past, the academic quarter. And this is the concept of time that we are using there. If somebody would come from somewhere else, uh, it would be maybe in panic, oh, I'm late uh, uh, or whatever. Um, so uh, I make, uh, uh, but not with intention, uh, cost us a bit nervous because I was using this academic part before I, uh, 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 I was coming in today. Uh, but uh, this means that we know the differences and then it's easier uh, uh, to work. Also, how we are leading teams can be the culture issue um, based either on different culture, uh, based on uh, different uh, business uh, uh, or um, cor corporate uh, culture or whatever. Uh, lingua franca, this is more or less for the joke. Uh, so, uh, uh, how, to, how to express ourselves correctly. Uh, and this, this, this could be uh, very important even to save our lives. Uh, uh, I'm joking a little bit because I'm sure that the Englishman would understand help uh, coming from the water uh, without the long, uh, very formal and very uh, polite uh, way uh, 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 to ask for something. Uh, but uh, yes, um, these patterns of talking are important in the way because in some cultures, there is first the small talk and then they are coming to, to, uh, uh, to the main uh, content and might be because of this small talk at the beginning or whatever, we can, uh, uh, we can lose actually uh, uh, the thing, um, the content that that should be given, uh, for example, uh, uh, to us. Um, so uh, um, in uh, Finland, uh, they will have a minimal speech at the beginning, uh, and uh, yeah, the clarity at the end will not be really the big one. Similar can happen by the Japanese, but they will at least repeat some of the things in between. 
um, then we can see how the communicate uh, uh, in different uh, uh, countries, or what are our sources from where we, we take the material to make then the conclusions. Um, uh, unfortunately, we will not have now time to go very detailed in this part, but it's just important that you can have the idea how the communication is running and what kind uh, uh, of communication patterns do we have, what kind of the listening uh, uh, patterns we have, uh, and uh, uh, of what we have to be aware on all these differences. Um, in, in this concept, uh, or on those concepts, also the concept of time is going. In Finland, they are very punctual and value good timekeeping. And all the time is this, uh, it's more or less uh, uh, equivalent uh, uh, given to different tasks. While, for example, in India, there is a great latitude regarding the punctuality. They are not so nervous about that, or they are not looking a lot about this. And in the meetings, uh, the Finns would start with the first topic and then follow the other topics and will not return. While, for example, in India, uh, they will go uh, like uh, having some starting point uh, and then returning back, doing the multitasking, uh, putting some prioritization and uh, for uh, by the working in, in the group, uh, for some people, this could be really, really uh, uh, stressful uh, because it is a different way as they are used. They can come, uh, they can uh, get the culture shock uh, and uh, having then the difficulties. Uh, for really now, more or less, the end, um, I would like to point out, out some cross-culture awareness in IT, so in some business. Uh, of course, I decided for IT, I'm coming from the uh, IT, uh, but uh, uh, of course, uh, also IT, which is like technical and Everything is clear and everyone is using the same uh, uh, icons. Uh, we can have the culture sensitive topics like the given names and the family names. Uh, we have to be aware about the culture distance. Um, the culture distance Richard Lewis measure in his triangle. Uh, and if this is three angle and here is something and then here is something then of course the distance is bigger as here is something and here is something because we are not going around the corner we just have to do the short way uh, <clears throat> by the IT we have to do a lot with the requirements uh, a lot with the modeling so we have to deal with the languages. Uh, we have to deal also with standardized uh, messaging or with the models. But it is important that we understand the, the client and that the client will understand us. Otherwise, instead of the bicycle, uh, in the sense of programming, application, or whatever, you will get the the bus, a uh, flying bus. Might be this will be much better, but probably you will have unhappy client. Um, it is also needed some time to adapt the management practices because of the different cultures, uh, uh, because otherwise you are struggling too much with the partners cooperating, 
uh, with the deadlines, with understanding of the time and uh, a similar thing. Um, we have to avoid all these, if I'm saying very simple, we, ha we have to understand the data, whatever connection it is, pure data, or as a data in the management process or whatever in the cult culture context. So we have to be aware that in the entity relationship model, the culture is involved in SQL queries, in all the analytics, in information system development, in the web pages uh, development, um, the colors that we are using in the web pages, uh, there are maybe some prohibited in some cultures. Whatever you like the color, you cannot use it because uh, it would, would not be the positive. So in Slovenia, we are, we are usually joking between green and uh, uh, violet, uh, while green color is the color of the football team from the capital, from Ljubljana, and the violet, it's from the Maribor. Uh, so what happened to me uh, one time, I went to buy something from the, from the football club when they were selling on the street when the match was important. And I had the green uh, cardigan. Uh, I mean, I didn't think about that. And um, they were polite to me. They were nice to me. But at the end, they said to me, it was really necessary today, lady, to have the green cardigan. And I was, I mean, like shocked. And then I said, oh my goodness. So uh, you see also in the sport, the culture is important. The color is important. The emblems are important. The symbols are important. So many things that influence our work, our daily life. That means that culture or intercultural communication is an essential competence for any profession. With the culture awareness, we can avoid many misunderstandings and make our life much, much easier. Uh, culture is a part of everything in everyday life, and we have to be aware about that and try to integrate in uh, our daily activities in one or another way. Because just one side is right doesn't mean that the other side is wrong. We just don't have seen the light from, our, from the other side. So be careful, either you're de dealing with six or with nine, because you don't see both sides and it's important to have a look to the both sides. With this, I would like to finish my talk today. Um, we have two more minutes. Uh, if there is any comment or the question, otherwise, uh, in any case, of course, not otherwise, Thanks uh, to be patient. Thanks to be with me uh, this afternoon or evening. Depends from which culture and time and geographical zone you are coming. Evharisto, obrigada. The right order. This was the right order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Tatiana, for this very nice talk. Uh, please stop sharing the screen. Uh, send us a presentation uh, as we were, as I'm going to try to coordinate together with Diana uh, the questions. And uh, the floor is to the audience. I have some questions, uh, but the floor is first to the audience uh, in case that we have a question from the audience. So please, um, if there are any questions, uh, just uh, switch on your microphone or raise your virtual hand in order to start uh, uh, our discussion. Uh, until you know the audience will get ah, okay. We have the first comment. I cannot. Uh, what is this? Hvala, which means thank you. I don't know something like this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Teja. 
think he's a colleague from Slovenia. Uh, uh, well, uh, it's the Taya that you actually introduced to us last time. Me? Yeah, I believe that you were in the contacts with her or you, uh, or I was thinking that you are presenting her doing something with mathematics, then was misunderstanding. I'm sorry, but... Um, Probably I'm forgetting. Anyhow, I, I have a first question from the audience that I have to... Ah, Nuno Escudero has a question. No, he should wait. <laughs> no, Nuno, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Kwasi, but I can wait. And, uh... No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I can wait. <laughs> Okay, oh, let, let me put my camera on. Oh, so uh, nice to see you all. Thank you very much, Tatiana, for the nice talk. Um, well, the, the, the question I have is, um, I think it's general, but how do you see that the Erasmus program after these 35 years is somehow making European students and European staff in general from higher education being more aware of all these cultural differences that we have in Europe and if you think that this impact might have somehow benefited um, from the situation that you are facing now, this silly war that we have going on, and we have some universities that have Russian students, Ukrainian students, some of them are living together or were living together in February when this thing started. Um, do you think that the Erasmus program is really um, uh, a good tool also to raise awareness to these cultural differences and to see our young children, our young students uh, realize that uh, either different, we should live together in peace. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nuna. Um, the question is complex if I'm going in all the details, uh, but Erasmus is for sure uh, raising the awareness of the differences of the importance of different cultures, because uh, um, if uh, uh, we are saying that also the gender is a part of the culture or the differences in the culture, uh, it is more and more important that the teams are not just uh, the women or just the men, but that they should be equal. I mean, now it's not necessary that you have four and a half men in the team, and four and half women in the team. So you not cut somebody on the half for that reason. But it is important that we have this inclusivity. Um, or, or why? Uh, uh, because uh, um, already by the Hofstede, we have masculinity uh, and femininity. And this is also meaning that femininity are soft skills. Uh, while the, 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 I don't know, the algorithms or the programming would be more uh, uh, man part. And the solutions, when we are trying to find the solutions, we have different view how to do something. Um, I believe that you know yourself and every one of you uh, walking around with your family, partner, children or whatever, and depend on the gender, you want to go one way and the others want to go the different way. And at the end, maybe you find out that something that you were doing for many years on the same way was not really the best because the other solution was better. So uh, this combination of everything I explain now on the gender, it's very important. And also my experience, I was for 16 years uh, Erasmus coordinator and I was speaking with many, many students. And as long as they didn't went out or they were not involved intensively in the work with the Erasmus students coming to visit us or coming to see us, um, they were not aware of some of the things. We are even not aware in details about our cultures. And this is important. Because if we are aware about the differences about our cultures, if we are aware also maybe on the historical reasons of these differences, we have some chances to avoid uh, some of the, uh, of the crash, uh, some of the fights uh, that, uh, uh, that 
could be based only on those differences. Um, of course, some of the, the, the mentioned topics are going much uh, over uh, these uh, uh, ideas, uh, but yes, Erasmus is important. Uh, um, not only those on mobility uh, learned, also those that have the internationalization at home learned a lot. Um, recently, Slovenian students got the exercise to present on the way out of the box to Erasmus students uh, the things about Slovenia. They, 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 they were, uh, uh, they did it a very good job, but they were surprised because they found things that they didn't know before about the Slovenian language, Slovenian culture, Slovenian habits, um, and uh, similar. So um, uh, wherever you put me, I will always advertise for the culture awareness. Uh, because uh, uh, I believe that uh, without uh, uh, um, culture awareness, uh, inclusion, uh, uh, we cannot reach the best and the top results. It is important to have all possible views on the problems that we would like to solve and uh, Culture is helping us uh, with this. And this is the culture doing already through the centuries. What is important, it's staying and we keep it. Um, the rest maybe die for a while, but could come back again. Um, I don't, uh, I hope I was answering uh, uh, somehow to your question. Um, might be I was a little bit philosophic, but as I said, the question itself was complex and was uh, uh, including also the parts on which uh, it's hard to give the, 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 the reasonable answer. Yeah, it was very right. Thank you very much. Just to add something that I think that uh, the Erasmus or the internationalization of us or the universities through the students or staff mobility is the greatest tool regarding cultural intelligence development. I remember when the first time that I moved for postgraduate studies in UK, I never said, please. I say, give me this. Because in my culture, we don't say please. So after a comment that I received from the British, ah, the new Greek guy is very unpolite. I was getting furious. Why am I unpolite? And then, you know, because you don't say please or because you don't hold the door. So then I have learned how to speak to, to British or how to behave. Then when I involved in, in the international projects, I remember I received an email from Swedish. Yes, I want this. I said, what is this problem? And then I realized that this is the way that they speak. So I replied to them, yes, you will have it. Or if you speak to the Israelis, they never say, dear sir, how are you? With my best regards, you know, Richard. They don't say this. They say, hi, Costas, this is what we have to do. So I replied to them the similar way. So I will say the nationalization is, is not only a quantification criteria for the university is the is the best way for the integration of Europe uh, and you know like you know also the intellectual uh, the cultural integration so to answer to Nuno I think that you know Erasmus mobility internationalization is the only way in order to integrate Europe that's why Erasmus is the most successful program right now in Europe recognized by Europe not by us because I'm participating in the Erasmus because of the European Commission has said this more successful than any other project because it integrates Europe. And that, that I have now the question to you, Tatiana. How much do you think that cultural differences can affect the collaboration of an international project? How, how much is, you know, I mean, what kind of people do you need in order to have a smooth collaboration within international projects? This is my first question. And then I have another one that uh, I, I would like your uh, another one that you mentioned, like you mentioned in some cultures, leading a team. It, it, it is, you know, it involves culture. Can you please take a, elaborate? But my first is like, how much do you think non-culture, um, non 
integration of culture can prohibit and place barriers to an international project like European universities, that there are so many different cultures. I mean, and how can we deal with this? How can you train very fast people that probably they have not traveled or people that they have not been exposed to another country or even people that they, um, they are not self-awareness, uh, uh, they don't have a self-awareness <laughs> in order to accept the difference. Uh, thank you, Costa. So, uh, probably you will need to repeat one of the questions once again, but this first and this, this is actually the same. Uh, so, uh, not be aware about the differences in the culture can destroy it, completely destroy it, an international project. Um, uh, because uh, uh, in the worst case, the differences can be so big that the people cannot communicate effectively with each other and not work effectively with each other. And if they cannot go through this barrier, it is better that they, they do not start to work on it at all. I can remember from an international pro project that was dealing with uh, uh, the, uh, with uh, um, uh, the problems of special needs, and already this is the problem in uh, uh, in Slovenian language. And when we then translate into English, we are saying the people with special needs. Uh, so um, uh, either they have uh, uh, the problems with mobility. Uh, either they are deaf or, or, or they have some other problems. And in that project, we start to work on the questionnaire. And we spent at least one day to clarify the taxonomy and to clarify the, the words, what it's meaning in some case and why why somebody is telling in that way and somebody is telling in another way. So um, we had really the problem of understanding. But of course, we were aware of these differences, not immediately. When we start to talk with each other and we didn't understand each other, then I say, OK, stop now. Let's go and define what means to whom what. And uh, uh, of course, we had native speakers, and we did, and we have the the rest of the people. So it is important, very important, that the people are aware and that they write down the vocabulary or taxonomy or whatever they need, that they can understand each other and they they can start to cooperate and work. So inside the project, uh, uh, if the project is limited. Uh, it's pretty easy because you can make this easily. Um, the, the project like European University, I believe that at least in Athena, we are from the first moment onwards aware about all those differences and we try to integrate them already the whole time in different activities and to show all this. How to teach people fast, how to learn the people fast, um, already, if you send them to the, the Hofstede web page, they can see the differences. But otherwise, um, a, a short lectures might be even shorter as this one, uh, uh, less deep, uh, uh, should help the people. Uh, why I'm saying this? Um, Almost always, when the University of Maribor is organizing uh, uh, a staff training week, that was not included in the week when you were in Maribor, but the reason was that I was also not available and that, that staff training week was very concentrated in one direction. But otherwise, they ask me that I'm doing at the beginning of the staff training week, such uh, intercultural course to make people aware, to ask them about few experiences. And then at once people start to explain, oh yes, and I was never understanding why the students are like unpolite. They were not unpolite. Uh, they are used to, to, to I, I don't know, 
Um, Anna and Tuna correct me, uh, but yes, the Portuguese students and the Spanish students, it's normal that they call, uh, they, they are not in Slovenia, we are used that students are calling us by the family name, so Professor Welzer. Um, don't say Professor Tatiana because the professor can kill you, not Tatiana, she's aware. But, uh, uh, and the students are coming and then are going to the professor and they want to be as much as possible polite and they are saying Professor Tatiana. And so some of my colleagues, then I can hear uh, how unpolite are those Erasmus students? They believe that we were uh, growing up together or whatever. So uh, uh, we have to teach both sides, not only the one that is traveling, but also the one which is at home, because they are not prepared on differences neither. Um, so these, the, we, we have to take care about both sides, teachers and students, those and staff, those who are traveling, as well as those who are accepting people. Uh, they have to be aware of some of those things. So short lectures, some materials of the web page and similar can be the help. But please help me, Costas, with your second question. No, 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 you have answered all my questions. You know, probably I repeat myself. I would like to emphasize that I think that for the people that they are not traveling, for the people that um, th those are the people that they need more help let's say more assistance in order to adapt and to be more inclusive regarding culture yeah. Uh, yeah. and i have another question in the previous lecture that we have last week it was very clear that um uh, iq is not related with uh, emotional intelligence i mean probably you, you you can demonstrate a very high iq but your emotional intelligence uh, will be very low but you know after this talk and after some reading that i have done it seems to me that um, emotional intelligence and cultural intelligence are very much linked because uh, you should not be affected, for example. I remember my first reaction. Now I'm talking only from my experience. When I received this first email from the Swedish, I said like, oh, because we are Mediterranean, they don't like us. That's why he's very rude to me. But this is like, I could not control my emotions. Like, if you know, I could combine this, you know, probably. Like, what is your opinion? How much is linked emotional intelligence with cultural intelligence? Uh, the, the, they are connected actually, because uh, uh, in emotional intelligence, yeah, we, we should not react uh, immediately, spontaneously, emotional, especially if this is going negative. At least I'm looking like that. And similar is when we are taking into account the differences in culture. Uh, or saying cultural intelligence. When you hear something first, let's uh, stop, what was that? And think about that and try to check and uh, if this is uh, really repeating or it's going crude or whatever, then to try as you would react so through, the, through the emotional intelligence, also through the culture intelligence, to mention something or 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 to work with people in the positive way, um, at least from my point of view, uh, most normal people sooner or later then react. Um, if the whole time somebody is like polite to them and they are, might be really unpolite, that maybe they have to change their approach and to go different way. Uh, um, so uh, uh, that, of course, both both are connected. Uh, I had this feeling uh, already last Monday when I was listening. Um, I was trying to make some notes uh, in the way to include them also in my part, uh, but then I was not able to be the whole time with that. But uh, yeah. Mm, uh, connection is close and uh, uh, both are important uh, also for our personal uh, growing. 
so that uh, that we make that that we became better. Excellent, excellent. I think uh, we should thank you, Anna Barat. Also, thanks you. She's still here with us. I think that we have over, we have exceeded, you know, the the time slot that we have for these uh, lectures. I would like to thank you, Tatiana, for this very inspiring talk. I will appreciate if you can share our screen in order to upload uh, the notes to the Athena Moodle platform for the students and the participants. I will upload the video today. And um, next week, I suspect that it's me that I will present you oral presentation skills. Uh, and then we will continue with uh, other, other um, guest speakers. I think that I will have uh, another speaker regarding uh, storytelling, which is very important as well for our development. So thank you very much. Obrigada. I don't know how it was like the thank you in Slovenian. I found it over there. Gvala. 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 Obrigado. Gvala. Gvala. Obrigado. You would say Costas. I say yeah. obrigada. Obrigada. <laughs> it's the masculine and feminine and so on. Ah, all right. But it's yeah. perfect anyway. Okay. Bye. Thank See you all. Okay. Thank you all. But in Slovenian, you you pronounce very well. The 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 basic uh, thank you is hvala. Hvala. And something Sorry. else. How did you arrange that we are talking and we can see the subtitles? What arrangement? What is setting is this one? In the... It's my fault. When I was uh, trying to to um, uh, to share the full screen. Uh, somehow, either in Zoom or uh, I believe it is a part of the slides, you have the possibility uh, that uh, you can select and the text is written. And uh, I didn't know what was happening. Uh, I cannot see now. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, now, if you can see here. Uh, no, I'm not sharing. Uh, but there are the possibilities forward, uh, backward, uh, pencil, and there is also the, 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 the typing of the text and then it's typing the text, but I recognize this by the slide 50. So the whole time it was, uh, 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 I can try to share. So this was the PowerPoint then? Uh, this is the PowerPoint, yes. So you can see in PowerPoint here, yeah, yeah, yeah. this means that the text is typing. I didn't know before neither, sorry. Very good. All right, so bye-bye and uh, have a nice night and speak to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye, see, see you soon. Thank you.